All right, so today we've got this 56 International. So you know how you're going to the county fair and you're walking up to the uh, entrance and there's cool cars and trucks in the parking lot? Oh, a couple weeks ago we were at the fair and this truck was sitting there and like I left the guy a note on his windshield that I wanted to walk around this thing with him and look at it and he did call me back so we're here to look at it today. So here with Dan. So uh, tell me about this thing, man. How, how did you get the body and everything? Uh, I was looking for a project. I grew up driving right. international grain trucks, so I was kind of fell in love with just the cab design and stuff. Um, didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but ended up finding this on Craigslist, fairly close to home, and uh, bought it September... 15th of 15 i think okay bought the original truck in its factory form stock truck 100 percent stock yeah yep. flathead probably yep so the flathead it had the guy thought it had valve issues it i never even tried to get it run but it we <laughs> we ran it onto the trailer with the starter uh, he threw a battery in it and ran like it on the three trailer. speed or something too yeah yeah and then, so what caught my eyes, I got looking at the frame on this thing, and it's got the second gen Dodge coil spring buckets on it, and then I saw the four link underneath it, and I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta talk to this guy. So, it took him, what, six years to build it? About six years before it ever moved under its own power. All right. I, you know, it's, I had a vision for what I wanted it to be. I always wanted to build a two-wheel drive truck because I thought it'd be cheaper and just, I only plan on using it to commute. It really didn't have a, you know, an off-roading purpose or any real purpose but to drive. And I ended up buying a truck with a long bed and I, the more I stared at it, it just, it wasn't gonna look right as a two-wheel drive. So I had a buddy that, had a 97 extended cab long bed just frame and axles for like 300 bucks he bought it from a guy that harvested the engine and drivetrain out of it and that's all that was left well so you got it with no engine or drivetrain well th this is the start yeah okay it, it was again i it was just i looked at it as it's a way to start yep i want to put a cummins in it <laughs> and real easy to drop a Cummins in a frame that you know had a it's Cummins in for it, it. Yep. so I bought that for 350 bucks and uh, started hacking it up and fitting stuff together and then started trying to come up with the drivetrain knew I wanted ideally a 12 valve and yep. I needed a manual trans and a transfer case yep. and then you start thinking about all the other stuff you need and I just wasn't coming up with the parts on their own. I was trying to scrounge and find used stuff and whatever and just was kind of coming up short. So I ended up buying a 99 24 valve from a guy that I worked at the local parts store that I saw almost weekly. And he just wanted to get a new truck. That one was getting rotten. It had 170000 on it. Mm -hmm. And I bought that from him. So now I have everything else. Well, the majority of what I needed. Okay. Um, so it then things started moving faster and it's just, you're waiting on just funds to be able to keep building. I uh, hear you. Yep. Inevitably, it was like, the yeah, first idea was like, just get it on the road and drive it and enjoy it. And it slowly turns into, well, I don't want to do this two and three times. I'm just going to do everything the way I pictured it do it right and hopefully then it's done and and a lot of it's I, i've never done, taken out a project like this so there's a lot of learning involved <laughs> this is your first one yeah i've wow. never you know i've done a lot of welding and different things like that but i've never taken out a project like this wow that's cool you know, being a farm kid there's always junk getting wow. fixed and breaking that you gotta make work so i'm not a stranger to that but i've never taken on a project anything like this before that's well, amazing i mean did you have to cut the frame and lengthen it the frame got shortened i think shortened 26 or 8 inches i cut out of it was it a quad cab 
it was an extended cab long bed and this is really really close to what a regular cab long bed would have been right. yeah because it does have an actual eight foot bed right well let's uh let's look uh, let's start going over this thing man i want to tell me about like the suspension first of all like so we got a 99 frame and on airbags like where'd you get those uh the bags i just got out of a s supply house um there's one in kenosha that that's all they do is they have giant totes of airbags of every size really? shape that you can imagine <laughs> and i just went in there and started measuring stuff <laughs> and i'm like man eh, these should work oh, i need to make all your steering and the so the steering and all that was done this past winter okay just trying to make it drive better and for the most part that did I had to get rid of the factory geometry I messed with a lot to make it cycle correctly to keep you know I had to lengthen the panhard bar the stock one I cut and sleeved and made it like an uh -huh. inch and a half longer to begin with to make the axle center okay and that dodges weren't real good to begin with and that made it worse so I had really bad bump steer. So this took all the bump steer away and now it's just like a little bit of slop in the box still. It's very drivable the way it is now compared to what it was. Is it stock lower bag mounts? With I just work? took, I just welded a plate on top of that coil bucket and drilled a hole in the center. Nothing has changed there otherwise. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I literally just welded a, you know, 3 16 plate on there. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh man, that's sweet. Now, what does it ride like when it's sitting like this? I've never really, it feels wonky. It's got to be like hard. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, I try and run it. Look at that. What would be about the factory height for yeah. the chassis? All right, so now the four link, did you make these bars? Yeah, um, the front suspension was, well, all the suspension, airbags, period, was inspired by a uh, company far from stock. Oh, they yeah. They do a lot of, like, first-gen Dodge stuff. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. That's where most of the impres where most of the ideas came for even putting air ride on it at all. And then the shock mount, is that, looks like you must have made that too, right, the lower? Yeah, that's homemade. Okay. The top's homemade. Oh, yeah. With the, that's right, the only thing that broke at, at first. It was just this piece of tube on the frame, not braced at all. And that, that took about a month oh, to break, and okay. then they braced it. Yeah. But I drive it every day, and that's why it's not clean. Yeah. Wow. So it's got some leaks and that's stuff right. like a normal truck. I love it. And then the nice thing is you can go buy all the here's your tank, air tank and everything. What kind of compressor did you use? That is, I just added that too. That's for the exhaust brake. Oh, okay. So I technically have two compressors on it now and two tanks. Mm. But that one came with the exhaust brake. Yeah, you got the big so there's here. one in the back too that's kind of hidden. Oh, up underneath, plate. yeah, okay. As far as the radiator goes, it ended up being literally the one on the cover of a, I don't remember if it was a Summit catalog or what it was, but I'm, you know, trying to find one with the right size inlet and outlet on the correct sizes Sorry, and yeah. in yeah. my particular height and width that I could have, as thick as I could go type thing. And... I ended up with literally the one that was on the cover of the magazine that I had that I was looking in. Um, ended up being what was working, but I couldn't run the factory fan. I ended up, since I had two frames then, I had to, I moved the engine back, I think it was three inches. I was gonna ask you about that. And I, so I just hacked off the mounts on this frame yep. and nicely took the ones off the other frame that I had and were able to just reuse those so I didn't have to like make my own per se. Yep. It still sets in like a factory one would. I mean, you had to have made these bumpers, right? The bumpers are homemade. I got yeah. some pictures I can show you that. I mean, there's a lot of work right here. It's all different, all separate pieces oh, yeah. everywhere, you nothing bent. It. Yep. 
I don't have any fancy tools. It's an amazing four and a half inch grinder and a welder. <laughs> it's a lot of work right here. Man. I would have yeah, made this bumper a lot smaller, but I needed the cooler for the water air intercooler mm. to fit in there. Okay. And I just got the biggest cooler I could within reason because I wanted it I to cool. Built it around that. Right. I like this too, how the, uh, the exhaust. <laughs> yeah, I always wanted a truck with a stack and never wanted to cut up any other, you know, per se good truck that I had. And I just thought, well, this is the right truck to do that too, so. And this is what I got looking at at the at the fair was this back four like this is awesome. So where'd you get the bars and the heims and all that stuff? Um, all of you know like a lot of the brackets and stuff are boughten and all the heims and stuff either from barns okay or yeah. rough stuff. Yeah. One of the two I've used both for different things. That, but it's all quarter wall tubing too, made top that, and bottom. That yep. Reverse thread so you can. Yep. I've, I figured stuff like that, I better build it super beefy because I don't ever want to go back because I do pull trailers with it. Nothing real yeah. crazy, but you know, a 20,000 pound rated gooseneck trailer that's, with a skid a, loader or yeah. a dozen round bales on it, it's still a fair <laughs> amount of weight for. Wow. Man. They probably made those front. Mm -hmm. those that two, was right? two different mounts, and I just started connecting everything. And, And this is where the frame got cut, obviously. Oh, okay. and plated the outside, and I, from where this frame starts to be a rail, not a box, I did box everything else in. I made outers just a little bit smaller to double the width of them. Yeah, make them nice and thick. Yeah. 35, 13, 520s. Got a ton of work in this rear bumper. Yeah, the bumpers are the only thing, you know, that you'd consider a body part that I didn't reuse. Yeah. Everything else is, the way you see it is the way I bought it. <laughs> I didn't Didn't take any nothing. dents out or nothing, huh? No. A lot of thumbs up, stuff like that. And then uh, the inside, you got roll cage in there, it looks like. Yeah, I just wanted to see if I could do it more than any other. <laughs> That's the only reason it's in there. Well, I got some nice gauges in there. Modern stuff. Looks like the uh, that the stock Dodge column. Yep, man, pedal box. Yep. So did you do the same thing where you cut out that section of the? Yep, exact same thing. And then weld it in. Yep. That's what I did. Yep. Yeah, you'll see it plain as day when I open the hood. I recognize that bracket in there, and especially like this part on the. I saw somebody do that one time. I'm like, oh, that's genius. You know? So much easier. Yep. Regular lap belts. What are the seats from? I remember I got them some foreign car. I got them out of the junkyard. Oh, really? For like 150 bucks. <laughs> you must have a two inventor then, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, what about cab mounts? How'd you do that? Did you use the Dodge cab mounts? Yeah. Um, when you look in here, there's a lot of there's a lot of space there. Um, so I ended up you know where you can mount the cab and box because i didn't want to oh, yeah. cut the floor of the box out so the way the other truck was the frame was like dead flat i took two inch tubing and went from the highest spot on the back of the frame and ran it straight up to the front and everything mounted off of that and used the dodge yeah, mounts I recognize the mounts yeah wow that's, i probably that's put it. i don't know sixteen thousand miles on it i would guess oh. since about 2020 but it was painted yellow with a brush i'll with tell you that brush. yeah i don't know if you can yeah you can kind of see it i don't know if you can get in there with the light oh, yeah but you can tell people like that's just as far as they could reach in and, <laughs> like when i had the bed off it was super obvious 
you could see the brush strokes. <laughs> so it was painted with a brush, yellow, at one time. bunch of new stuff in here yeah this is where well it was equally as expensive under the hood the way I decided to do things yeah so I'm lucky I have a cousin that has a small like one-man show diesel injection shop so well, he was that helps. able to help me out a lot <laughs> new pump and everything right because mm -hmm. it was a electronically controlled BE pump so this is a p7100 off of a 12 valve so it just yeah, just mechanical. So it could be right? all schematic. No computer at all yep. to run anything. On a 24 valve. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I wanted a 12 valve. I just, 12 valve trucks, when you're looking at buying a rotted out truck that still runs, these are a lot cheaper than a 12 valve. Are they the same size block wise and everything? Yeah, they're virtually the same block and internals, different head different and injection head. system. Okay. But that's cool, you can still retrofit the Yeah, you just got to change the pop-off pressure on the injectors. And, this and the front cover. Cool enough, too? I so hardly far? ever, I like virtually never have to turn the fan on. Really? Oh, you do it by yourself? Yep. Yeah, there's no switch or nothing. Everything's super, super mechanical, as simple as I can make it. <laughs> and there's a few things I'd like to redo, like... Oh, there's plenty of room in there. Did you have to cut all this out yes. or is this how this was? Yeah, that uh, basically like this piece that's tech screwed in, it went down as far as that and then curved around the way there. that was all tight. That all had to go. You had to cut all this yeah, out. Yeah, basically make oh, a giant wow. doghouse. Oh man. You got these small noses on them and then you can't, the radiator is like the biggest problem. Yeah. And it yeah. is, I mean, it's, it's tight in here. That's only about what the factory one was. 24, 26 inches wide, maybe? Yeah, I forget what it is, but it's it, it is small. Huge, but it's thick. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. it has no problem keeping it cool. And water to air intercooled because I had nowhere to put an air to air. Hmm. Or else I would have rather. It's just a lot simpler to have an air to air, but. But then you got to put that somewhere, I had right? nowhere to go. I, yep. I looked into small ones that I could fit in the bumper, but none of them are rated. They're all like rated for gas cars. They're only rated for like 20 pounds. What's this put out? Uh, the way it is right now, like around 30 is all. Not, which is nothing for these things. Is this all stock turbo stuff and everything? No, it's a drop in. It's a stainless 64, 67, I think. Okay. If I remember right. Yeah. For 63, 67. That's what it is. And there's just, you know, some standard stuff done on the interior of the motor, push rods and valve springs and stuff just yeah. to... You can see it's all been going through. Make it hold a... You know, just make it live at, I'm guesstimating, 500 horse. you guys get some uh, ideas from this and it's amazing what you can do with a some time and a welder and a and a grinder right yeah i, I don't have any fancy skills or yeah. training it's just having the place to do it and be willing to just keep grinding on it yep yep well, cool man thank you so much for showing us your truck buddy. yeah i appreciate awesome. it thank so, you for checking it out yeah and if anybody else has something like this cool you want to see uh, featured, uh, send me an email. RobGuy01 at sbcglobal.net. And uh, we'll come out and 
check your stuff out. Any cool cars or trucks or whatever. So, all right, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right.